welcome back to my channel everyone you'll be pleased to know after seeing these images go up on my social media accounts that I did record behind the scenes of the makeup to start this look I mixed together some fuller's earth I chose to use this clay because it naturally cracks it leaves a really awesome effect on the skin so this product is used in a lot of face masks it's used to absorb oil and dirt from the skin you will find this in other cosmetics I know Lush Cosmetics do some products that contain Fuller's Earth because it really does draw out the impurities on the skin. It leaves it very clean and it leaves it very soft. I bought my bag of this from Amazon. I know it's also available on eBay and you can get it in a variety of sizes. So in my Tupperware dish, I've mixed about four heaped tablespoons of the clay powder and I'm eyeballing the amount of water because I'm going to mix it to a paste. It's a bit like trying to mix oil and water to begin with. It really doesn't want to smooth out. You'll never get it entirely smooth, but you don't want that. An uneven texture really works well. So this is my model Carrie Ann and she has kindly offered to sit there and be painted with this stuff. So I'm using my spatula from Kryolan to apply this. I am going into the hairline because it does give a really cool effect. So I've just tied her hair back and as I say, I am just pushing that onto the hair in the direction that the hair's going. Now I didn't need to take this too far back. In my mind, I knew the angle of the photos that we were going to be getting, so I only need to take it a few inches back. I then go on to take this over the ears, down the neck, around the back of the shoulders and over the face. I'll let you carry on watching and then I'll come back when I need to explain some more. At this point with the face, you want to make sure you're not smearing it too thin. You will get an uneven texture which is fine, but you want to be able to cover it so that you're not seeing too much of the flesh underneath. You still want a nice coverage with the clay. When it comes to applying it to the eyes, you do want to apply a thinner amount. Apply it to the brow bone, leave the mobile eyelid with nothing on. You don't want your model to struggle to open her eyes because it's quite thick. And like with any mask, you shouldn't really apply it too close to the eyes because it's not made for that area. Now this can take a good hour to dry. So I decided while it was wet to airbrush over it. The reason I've chosen to use these products is because I know how they photograph. I've had a lot of experience using these colors. So although they will look quite wishy-washy and a bit powdery in the flesh, on camera they photo so vibrantly. When it comes to using different products, you do need to experiment a lot in order to know what they're gonna do. On the end, I'm gonna show you a photograph. On the left side, it's untouched, and on the right side, it'll be the retouched image. So you can see exactly how it looks from when I finish here on the camera, how it looks in that daylight in front of the window, to exactly how it looks on camera, and you can see the difference. It's such a fantastic product to use. This is my Dynair airbrush. Their colors are so vibrant. They do come out, as I say, like a powdery appearance in the flesh, but they photograph so brilliantly. So it's still quite damp and it's giving an uneven finish. As it starts to dry, you'll see it's starting to look more opaque. I'm going in with the white colour to add some highlights. Not only am I adding highlights, this is going to be a base for some colour. The reason we want to put a white underneath is so that the colour really pops. I do apologise that the footage is going to keep going light and dark. The sun couldn't make up its mind, so I kept coming in and out. Now, I didn't really know what I was going to do. I just made this up as I went along. So there is no rhyme or reason for what I'm doing. I'm adding highlights to all the higher planes of the face first, then taking a step back, taking a look, and then deciding where to go from there. You can see here, it's really starting to crack up close. Now I'm going in with some color. I'm not going to make this uniformed. I have just decided to add it in various places and create more of an art piece and just something a little bit more creative, I suppose. 
Again, I'll let you watch and then I'll come back when I've got some more bits to tell you. I've added in some black to the eyes, around the temples, a little bit down the cheekbones, also around the head and around the eye sockets. Just bring in some more dimension and shadows to the face. As Martin the photographer had told me that we were going to be shooting against black as our background, I knew adding in these darker contours would really help make the shapes of the face underneath all this texture really stand out. Probably been doing this about 45 minutes and the product is still drying and this can affect the consistency of your colour but as soon as it dries you'll get more of an even finish. So I applied some dark eyeshadow around the eyes and then off camera on set I just did some final touches to finish the look. So here on the left you can see how it photographs straight onto camera and then on the right you can see how it looks when it's been retouched. So I'd like to thank Carrie Ann for being my model and Martin who captured some fantastic images and Stefka our retoucher. If you'd like to see more of their work then I will link them in the description bar for you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. You can click on my previous two tutorials here and you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Bye!